SPRAT Safe Practices for Rope Access Work provides Accepted Practices for Rope Access Work Practices to Protect Against the Hazards Associated with Rope Access Work and Information for a Comprehensive Rope Access Program. The standard does not address the use of single main systems without backup systems. Sections 2 through 5 of Safe Practices for Rope Access Work address requirements of a rope access program. These requirements include provision that work team members are informed of foreseeable hazards that they may encounter during the performance of their responsibilities, that the program ensures work team members have the knowledge, training, skills, and experience necessary to safely perform their responsibilities, and that the program recognizes the limitations of the work team members to perform rope access work and ensures that no work is undertaken that exceeds those limitations. Within a rope access program, policies and procedures must be consistent with the presiding regulatory authority at the work site. Sections 2 through 5 also address the responsibilities of personnel within the rope access program, including the employer, who has overall responsibility of the program, the rope access program administrator, appointed by the employer, who manages the program, a rope access supervisor, designated by the employer, who implements the program at the work site, and the work team member, who completes work in accordance with the program. Sections 3, 4, and 5 present the requirements and responsibilities of the rope access program and personnel through parallel subsections depicted in the table presented here. Subsequent sections of safe practices for rope access work presented in the table here provide further details of requirements for rope access systems, rope access equipment, and the administrative and training requirements of a rope access program. Training must be provided to all work team members and prospective personnel at a minimum in a manner consistent with SPRAT's rope access certification requirements and work at height certification requirements. Additional training for specific work methods and work environments must be provided as required by the access work plan, client, or the presiding regulatory authority. Refresher training should be provided on an annual basis as well as for work team members that demonstrate inadequate retention from training or who have not been engaged in rope access work for six months or more. Certifications should be maintained in accordance with SPRAT standards. Rope access technicians must document their rope access experience, including their work experience, certification, and training. Experience documentation must provide the date range, at entries not exceeding two weeks, the employer name, the work details, the rope access details, and the rope access hours worked, including time spent establishing rope access systems, training, completing responsibilities while using rope access systems, and worksite safety management. Rope access hours must be verified by another individual, such as a rope access supervisor, employer, trainer, evaluator, or client. Certified rope access technicians must be used for all rope access operations. Additional work team members may operate rope access systems if specific criteria are met. Work team size is determined by the number required to ensure prompt rescue. All work teams must be directed by a rope access supervisor present at the work site. This rope access supervisor must meet all requirements of Section 4 of Safe Practices for Rope Access Work and should be a Level 3 technician. A Level 2 technician may be designated as a rope access supervisor if specific criteria are met. Prior to beginning rope access work, a rope access supervisor must ensure completion of an access work plan. The access work plan must be maintained at the work site, available to all affected persons, and updated as necessary during the course of rope access work. A documented review of the access work plan must be conducted prior to each work shift and after updates. The access work plan consists of at least three parts. The work method, which details the rope access systems, tools, work equipment, and more required for completing the work. The risk assessment, which identifies hazards and risks associated with the work method and work environment, and identifies controls to ensure risk is reduced to an acceptable level. And the rescue plan, which establishes procedures to ensure prompt rescue. A hazard zone must be identified, established, and maintained. 
the hazard zone should be marked or blockaded to warn work team members and others, including the public, of hazards associated with the work being performed. Appropriate personal protective equipment, including helmets, must be used by anyone in the hazard zone. Fall zones must also be identified and established. Extending a minimum distance of 2 meters, or 6.6 .6 feet, from any unprotected edge, fall zones should be marked or blockaded to warn work team members and others, including the public, of the risk of a fall. Appropriate fall protection must be used within a fall zone. To facilitate access, anchorage systems should be established outside the fall zone. As part of the work method of the access work plan, a communication plan must be established prior to beginning work. Communication methods must be effective for the duration of work. Communication methods should include electronic communication systems compatible with the work environment. Signals, such as hand or whistle signals, must be reviewed by the work team before beginning work. Anchorage systems used within rope access systems must be at least the greater of 12 kilonewtons, or 2,700 pound force, or two times the maximum arrest force of the backup system. Forces associated with directional anchorage systems may require higher anchorage system strengths. At least two anchorage systems are required to establish a main and backup system. One anchorage may be used to establish multiple anchorage systems. Main and backup systems must be used in a manner that minimizes both potential freefall and swingfall. Freefall potential should not exceed 0.6 meters, or 2 feet, to minimize clearance requirements. Any main system requires an associated backup system, with the exception of dual main systems. Rope or edge protection should be used as appropriate to protect rope access systems and property. Rope access equipment used in rope access systems must be compatible. Equipment should be used in accordance with manufacturer's instructions and recommendations. Equipment should comply with relevant standards. Equipment must be suitable and functional in the work environment and must be inspected for damage and function prior to use. Documented inspections of equipment must be conducted at a minimum on an annual basis. Tools and work equipment must be suitable for the rope access work and compatible with the rope access systems. Tools and work equipment attached to work team members or rope systems must not impair the function of the main or backup systems. Appropriate steps must be taken to prevent tools and work equipment from being dropped or falling. Tools and equipment more than 10 kilograms or 22 pounds in mass should be suspended with a separate rope system secured to an independent anchorage system. A backup system should be considered when significant risk of harm to personnel or property from a component failure of a rope system suspending or transporting tools, work equipment, or materials exists. A suspended temporary work platform should be used if a work team member may be suspended at work for an extended period of time. Anchorage systems for the platform should be independent of those used for the main or backup systems. If work seats are used, they must not interfere with the harness's connections to the main or backup systems. Rescue procedures must include, at a minimum, personnel requirements, emergency service contact information, provision to ensure arrival of emergency services, required equipment and its location, and methods to ensure prompt rescue. Rescue procedures must consider the level and experience of the work team and should be practiced at regular intervals. Rescue procedures should use remote rescue systems and incorporate backup systems. Rescue should be conducted by rope access technicians on the work site. Work team members are expected to perform emergency care in accordance with their training. A documented post-job debrief should be conducted to review any efficiencies or deficiencies following rope access work. All incidents related to significant injuries to work team members or damage to property must be investigated and documented. All affected persons should be informed of the root cause of the accident and of corrective actions taken. SPRAT documentation is publicly available on SPRAT.org.